Next, our reporters followed up on the recreation field story from our last newscast. They wanted to know more about artificial turf. They talked to the professor who runs the website synturf.org. Give Mirfendereski, a professor of international law at Brandeis, got interested in the issue when he was a youth soccer coach in Newton. He used to live here in Somerville, and he met up with the team at Dillboy Field. The big problem in Somerville is not really artificial turf versus natural grass fields. The big problem is how much of the green space and the open space does this city uh, is going to put under development. Yeah, you see this, the, these, this is the crumb rubber. And as you can also see, as I pick some up, also some of the green, the fiber from the, from the turf has come up. Every time the ball hits the ground, a whole bunch of this stuff comes popping up. You see? Every field has about 40,000 ground tires that provides the stability for the blades. And over time, uh, any given year, about 5 to 7% of that crumb migrates. And for example, if you go to the website page called Crumb Rubber, you will get all that information about Crumb Rubber, how it comes about, what kind of toxins are in it, what kind of carcinogens are in it. Uh, my biggest uh, concern is that because these fields uh, create a faster pace of play, because it allows for players to cut and run, and because the traction is good, you can actually accelerate a lot faster. It doesn't take a, you know, an MIT uh, physics major to tell you that mass times acceleration uh, gives you the force of, of, that, of that impact that then creates issues with concussion, issues with broken you know, bones. And then you, know, you have the, um, uh, the, the career-ending problems of playing on artificial turf fields, particularly among the young whose bodies are in a stage of development. Um, knee injuries, particularly, and the ones of the, the, the lig you know the ligatures, and then the, and, and ankle injuries. This particular construction has a has a has a heat effect, in a sense that it absorbs a lot of heat, uh, and then not only it makes it uncomfortable for people who play on it and during hot days, but also it's, it's a heat island. So so the question for Somerville, it's one of the most densely populated cities in the in the, in the not only in the Commonwealth but maybe in the country, as I remember. Um, there needs to be a discussion, a conversation among all the stakeholders in the community whether uh, we can afford to get rid of more green space and more common space and turn them into artificial turf fields with certain prohibitions about play, time, access, and so on and so forth. Uh, that's the big debate. Next, our reporters track down a professor of public health who has looked at artificial turf. So when we think about the two options, um, there are risks and benefits on both sides. Neither one is risk-free, and ultimately the decision is balancing um, a number of risks with the cost of putting in the field, maintaining the field, um, and having the field available as frequently as people need in order to have enough physical activity to decrease um, sort of this or to at least begin to combat um, our act inactivity. So when we think about risks associated with artificial turf, there are really um, uh, just a few of them. One is the heat that's generated um, when the turf is out in the sun. The turf brings with it these uh, volatile organics that will off-gas in the hot weather. Temperature is hotter um, and there is a calculated lifetime excess cancer risk. Another issue which is what I think we see most often in the public, you know, in the literature or in the press, in the popular press, is the issue of the contaminants um, that are part of the um, sort of the, the particles that are that make up this turf, and those uh, are in part recycled tires. Um, and so um, we know that we can measure some heavy metals present in those uh, in that turf. Now let's go to the other side, which is the the natural turf, the grass. What are the risks associated with the grass? Those risks include 
the use of pesticides, herbicides, and fertilizers that have to be used if the field is going to main, be maintained as a green turf field. We know what some of the risks are associated with many of those herbicides and pesticides. Those are looking at neurological effects in young kids, developmental effects, and for some of them, carcinogenic effects as well. Many towns have struggled with this because on the one hand, um, we want our kids and adults to be outside playing. We also don't want to use the pesticides, but we also um, want to make sure that what we put in doesn't have unintended consequences. Professor Heiger Bernays did note that certain studies have shown the levels of risk associated with artificial turf are below what are considered benchmark levels. To learn more, check out a study that the state of Connecticut did at bit.ly slash ctstudy.